What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. I'm one of your hosts, Snowbike Mike, and of course, I am joined by my two incredible, illustrious, downright awesome co-hosts. To kick off the show, I got to say what up to my guy. He's rocking the black and red jersey. He's ready for Sunday, Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday, that is, y'all. My guy, Paris Lilly, how are you doing today? How are you feeling, my friend? Oh, I am amazing. We are less than 48 hours away from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being in the Super Bowl. And I'm wearing my Derek Brooks double nickel jersey that I got 20 years ago and it still fits. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. This is my good 20 years job. ago and you're yeah. still rocking that? Yeah. Nice, Paris. I like that. I am so excited for Super Bowl Sunday. Of course, we all know who you're rooting for, but why don't you give us a quick rundown over under the spread? How you feeling looking at TB12 right now? I, I, I got to say, and I might have egg on my face by Monday, but Kansas City, you know, point spreads three and a half. That's fine. But I, I have such a great feeling about this game. And I'm usually Mr. Worry Wart. I don't like to go on record with this, but I think the Bucs are going to win. I really do. I think we're going to win the Super Bowl. I think Kansas City, all the injuries they've had on their offensive lines are going to come back to haunt them. Shaq Barrett, JPP, you're going to eat. And Big Vita's going to push the middle, so I'm excited. And, of course, oh, yeah, by the way, we got the greatest quarterback ever in Tom Brady. And uh, even though he's 43, he's still playing at an elite level. So let's go do it. Let's go win a Super Bowl. That Are you from awesome. Tampa, Paris? Is that why yes, you're a I fan? Am. Okay. Yes, born and raised. Otherwise, why would I be? <laughs> I don't know. Amer you know. Americans have a weird way of finding teams that they that they that they follow. You know, in, in America, right? Franchises move all over the place, so it's not necessarily where you're where you're from, right? There are LA fans who live in Oakland, yeah. and you know, it's it's all over. And, and St. Well, Louis, the Rams fans, it's all over the place. I agree with you normally, but you have to understand the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are statistically the losingest franchise ever, ever in history. More than the Browns. Of any sport. Yeah, more, more than sports. Cleveland? <laughs> yes, more. So so when I say I am a true fan and I've had loyalty since 1976, I truly mean I mean, mean you're it more dedicated. I, I give you credit there because like I, I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, and that's just because uh, I, I, I was raised – my stepdad was a Packers fan. Uh, and so it was finally fun to watch a team that actually won where I was born and raised in Cleveland, and holy shit. I could, I could, I could never in confidence be like, yes, I'm a fan of the Cleveland Browns. So I now, give you props there, Paris. Now I, you know, I I know you're younger than me, so I'll just and we'll we'll get off of sports talk. But I remember <laughs> 1985, the Bay of Pigs in a blizzard up in Lambeau, Oof. and I thought Steve Steve Young was our quarterback, and uh, I thought he was going to die. Lynn Dickey was a quarterback for Green Bay, but he literally, <laughs> I literally thought he was going to die. There have been some so. fun games to watch, like in Green Bay, where it's just like, how the hell are they surviving in this fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. weather? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, it is nice to have you back this week, Paris. It's going to be a very exciting show, of course, to talk with you about. But we got to go on over to our second co-host of the day, the Rogue One, Mr. Gary Witta. Gary, it's always great to see your smiling face. And you said to me, Mike, I've been playing a whole lot of Xbox this week. So why don't you tell me how you're doing, how your week's been, and let's just kick off the show with what you've been playing, Gary. I So I said to you before the show, I, th I, I think statistically this is true. Um, I've played my Xbox Series X more over the last week than the sum total of the entire time that I've had it. Oh uh, and I've played it quite a bit, but this I just went into overdrive this week. And I, I don't want to derail the podcast. It would be so easy to, to do a whole other conversation about it because, boy, could I talk about this game. But it's all down to one game, Yakuza Like a Dragon. My goodness, what a video game. What a game. I don't know if either of you have played it. If not, you've got to get on it. It's the most fun I've had in ages. It's on, I believe it's on Game Pass. you gotta, you got to get in on this game if you're not in there. I'm saying this to everyone who's listening right now. You Yakuza like a dragon. Play it now. Thank me later. What a game. What a game. <laughs> Slight correction: that one is not on. Oh, game all the, it's it's all the, the, yeah. it's the uh, Yakuza Kiwami one and two right, and zero right, are on Game Pass, right? right. Well, right. it doesn't matter. Then go put then go splash the cash for it. Trust me, it's worth every penny. It's it's I've I've, I've got like a hundred hours in, and I barely feel like I'm scratching the surface of this game. It's it's just vast, just a vast world to get lost in. So much fun! Wow, Gary. All right, I, I'm gonna kick it to Paris first because I've personally played this game and spoke a little bit about it. Now, Paris, have you played any of this like a dragon yet? I played it during the because I reviewed the the Series X before it came out, and they had the the preview version of it. I played that, but I have not played the full game, and I need to. Just for everything Gary's saying, 
everyone tells me how amazing it is. Shout out to Jeff over at Xbox. Everyone tells me how amazing. Yeah, Jeff's been giving is. me some tips. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I need to. I just I just haven't, but I know it's a great game. Okay. Initial thoughts after just your little bit of time with it. What did you think when you were playing it? It's it's good, and and I I won't derail from a, a topic we'll get to later. But I did play it in its performance mode, and uh, it, it was a great experience. It. My only thing with Yakuza Like a Dragon is I was expecting something else when I first played it. I thought it was a different type of game. But once mm. I realized what the style of it was, I was like, okay, it's like a turn-based RPG kind of thing. Okay, I get it now. And it's fun. I, I just need to just jump into it and play it more. Yeah, well, we were else? chatting a little bit before the show about the, the performance versus um, resolution trade-off. We should talk about it because that's like a big deal for next-gen gaming right now. I know that, we, that we're not all on the same page. I want to hear what Paris uh, has to say. Let, <laughs> let's get to that conversation well, sometime, sometime during you know the podcast what? for sure. I think we're going to kick off the show with it and talk about it right now because I've played Yakuza Like a Dragon for about 15 hours. And whenever I say play, I usually put little air quotes next to it because I feel like I'm just watching a movie most of the time. You know, I'm just kind of having fun, enjoying the moment. And I'm similar to Paris. I remember the other Yakuza games, and I knew that they switched up the combat style. And I thought, you know, will I like this turn-based action? You know, I'm not really big into that. But you know what? It grew on me, and I really enjoyed the yeah. story. I loved the hours that I played. And I can't wait to play more because Gary's going to gush all about it. But here, let's just kick off the show. Why don't you ask the question, and let's jump into it. So the interesting thing about um yakuza and many of these games that that, I, that offer this trade-off this was true even on the last generation some of these games were, were i remember playing borderlands 3 on uh, the playstation 4 pro and it offered you know a choice between uh, a frame rate mode faster frame rate or higher resolution and i remember thinking man when the next gen consoles come along i'll be so glad to not have to make these trade-offs right because it's gonna be true 4k gaming it's gonna be so powerful 4k 60 that's not actually so far yet proven to be the case in a lot of these games like Yakuza, which, you know, I only have good things to say about, but many other games that I've been playing uh, since uh, both the next-gen consoles have come out, we're still being asked to make this trade-off. The, the choice between a resolution mode, where you're playing in a true 4K, but a, more likely 30 frames a second, or a lower uh, resolution, in the case of Yakuza, I believe it's 1440p, at 60 frames a second, yeah, we're, we're being asked still to make that trade-off because we're not quite there yet either with the base hardware or, or or the development teams being able to kind of get the most out of them that we're getting like true 4K60. We're not getting, we don't get to have our cake and eat it just yet. We're being asked to make a choice. And I kind of hate having to make the choice because I feel like whatever I choose, I'm missing out on something, either the really, really high resolution or the glorious frame rate. But I goofed around a little bit with Yakuza the first couple of hours that I was playing it, played a little bit in performance mode, uh, again, which is 1440p on a 4K TV. Uh, whether it's upscaling from 1440p, I don't know, but that's what it's telling me the resolution is um, at 60 frames a second or true 4K at 30 frames a second. I played a little in both, and I just, I just all out decided, like, for me, it wasn't even a choice. Go with performance mode every time. Go with the 60 frames a second. And I, I found this to be true on other games as well. I generally find, I, I guess it's different for everyone. I know Paris has got a different point of view, and I'm keen to hear about it. But when, I, when I'm playing like 1080p or 1440p and, or compared to 4K, to me, the difference is not night and day. But 30 frames a second versus 60 frames a second, especially in a fast-moving game where the camera's moving around, driving games, action games, to me, that is night and day. And like, I'm very, very happy with, with performance mode, 60 frames a second. Like now that I'm used to that super buttery 60 frames per second uh, frame rate, going back to 30 frames just feels so juddery and slow now. For me, it's not even, I, like I said, I resent having to make the choice, but it's at least it's an easy choice to make. Performance mode all day long. So I 95% of the time agree <laughs> with you, with everything that you said. <laughs> But just recently, there's two games that I actually prefer to play in the quality mode at 30 frames. One, this is an Xbox, it's PlayStation, it's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay. Oh, wow. You, 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 would, oh, wow. you would think, oh, I want to play that in 60 frames, but I actually enjoy it better at 30 frames. 
I feel like it has more of a cinematic comic book feel that way. Mm. Not to mention, obviously, all the ray tracing and everything. It's just just a drop dead it's gorgeous so, game. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, so that's the key, right? It's not just about resolution with some of these games. It is some of the higher end features and, like Raid. Yeah. And it's yeah. also like of what you end up picking first. Like the first time I played Miles was like on stream. So I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to play at 4K. I might as well just do performance mode at 60. And then like I tried because I usually before this generation, I usually did quality like resolution and stuff like that. But because I had started in 60 frames per second mode and trying to go back to that off stream in like uh, 4K ray tracing, it was like hard hard to watch in right, 30 frames right. per second and it like miles morales almost ruined me so now i'm now i'm a performance uh baby over here i need <laughs> See, that I, I say, it's really interesting that you gave that particular game as an example paris because to me that's the kind of game where you know swinging around the city right. and fast you moving action like you feel like yeah. the 60 frames is going to be that's the way you would want to play so it's yeah, interesting you that think. you're willing to sacrifice that for the higher detail yeah, I, I agree. And, that, and that's why I wanted to bring that one up specifically, because it goes against everything you would think because you're swinging through the city, obviously all the fighting combos and things that you would do. Now, the other game, and this is the one I've actually been playing this week, is uh, Control, the Ultimate Edition um, that just came out for the Series X optimized version. I've been playing that in the quality mode at 30 frames instead of 60. And again, it's I'm sacrificing the frames for the visual fidelity because it has ray tracing in it, the reflections and everything. And I don't feel like I need the the quick action shooting in a game like Control, even though it is, you know, has shooting elements to it. I just prefer the visual fidelity in that. Now, so, when, now when, you, when you make that choice, Paris, do you spend a bit of time playing the game in both modes to kind of get a feel for the experience well, e either way? In this scenario, I've already played Control before on the PC at 60 frames. So I know what it looks and feels like at 60 frames. But when I picked it up on console, I'm like, I wanna see this in its best visual light, which again would be the quality mode at 30 frames. And it's fine. I don't I don't feel like I need to play it at 60. And and again, maybe it's just because, you know, the majority of my gaming life has been at 30 frames. So it doesn't bother me as much. I mean, obviously once you hit 60 and go above, you know, you get that buttery smooth reaction time to things and you want that. And that's why I'm saying 95% of the time, I agree with you. That's going to be my preferred method to play games. But every now and again, something comes up where I, I'm willing to sacrifice the frames for the visual enhancement that you'll be able to get. And those are just two examples I can think off the top of my head where I've done Maybe that. with Yakuza, it's an easier choice for me because, the, because in the resolution mode, it really is just a resolution upgrade. It's not like they're adding yeah. ray tracing. It doesn't look night and day different in terms of the visual fidelity. But when you mention Control Ultimate Edition, on you know the next gen consoles or Miles Morales where they are adding all of these extra where it really is like oh wow there is a noticeable difference right, in right. fidelity at the 30 frames mode that to me is a more agonizing that that's going to be a, a tougher choice when I when because I haven't played Miles Morales yet, but when I get to it I think I'm going to kind of resent it even more because I'll play a little bit with the ray tracing <laughs> go man this looks so good and then I'll play at 60 frames oh but this why can't I just have, I just oh, want to have a but both. here's the thing is that and John uh John BX uh, 32 in the chat uh because of course if you support on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can watch this live early um they're saying that there is a ray tracing performance mode that they did update with uh post launch so you do uh, it, it, it's it's not 4k i think it like kind of varies in um resolution like 1080 maybe 1440p don't hold me to that but yeah they it, they do have like a mode that can give you both but it's just not the resolution that's uh that's the the best mike where are you on all this uh I come from the fast twitch first person shooter gameplay background so I'm always going to push for more frames especially as I've grown with you know the higher hertz monitors and we've seen the more power in these consoles I've really leaned more on performance mode there's very few and far between games I think right now in this we'll call launch window that really take advantage of what we would see on that quality mode with the ray tracing and all the aspects I really want to see out of that to drop down to 30 for me so I'm always going to be on the side of give me more frames Let's get this game running a little bit better in my eyes. And that's what I, I've been leaning on lately. Do you feel well, a little bit disappointed, though, that in general, that after all the hype of next gen consoles and 4K gaming, we're still being asked to make these trade offs? <laughs> maybe I was maybe I was asking for too much or, or, or imagining too much, but I was kind of hoping we wouldn't have to make the next gen would be in a, about not having to make those trade offs. But here we are still making them. Now, Go is it, it? Is it? I, I, I totally get what you're saying, but in this early days we're talking more 
previous generation games that are quote yeah. unquote being updated. So they have not right. been built from the ground up to take full advantage of this hardware. So I guess, knock on wood, my hope is by the time we get to a game like Halo Infinite here at the end of the year, we'll start to see, and, and obviously on PlayStation, you see Horizon Forbidden West. Right. And I get those games are still going to show up on old hardware, but maybe they can finally start truly taking advantage of, of these quote unquote next gen features of this hardware. So yeah. we can have 60 frames and we can have ray tracing with this. Maybe, I don't know, they do some tricks under the hood with checkerboard rendering or whatever it, it'll be on, on Xbox so that, you know, you're, it's, it's basically DLSS you know, as you would do on PC. So they're taking the game, a 1080p image of the game and rendering it up to 4K. So it still looks good. I don't know. I'm hoping. That's no, that's a good point. I'm, I'm hopeful about that as well. You yeah. know, we've talked a lot about like, you know, the ga games always look worst right when the new right. consoles are new because the developers are still kind of getting, you know, a handle on the hardware. And there are a handful, of, there's a very small handful of games out there right now that are offering both the bells and the whistles. Uh, so I guess it's it's possible as developers get a better handle, better better handle on the hardware. Maybe um, you know a year or two from now that it'll be more uh, the norm. Here's a, here's a great example. I fully expect Forza her the new Forza Motorsport that's coming out. That better be at sixty and and yeah, that's a flagship or, title. Yeah, yeah. Or or even when you think Fable or you think Avowed, other games that are be, being built from the ground up to take advantage of the Series X and the S, those, I, I, it would be a disappointment, quite honestly, if it was not 60 frames, standard, campaign, multiplayer, ray tracing for the, for the uh, campaign mode, et cetera. That is next gen. That's what we're expecting coming, coming from these games and from this hardware. So I'm, I'm still patient here in the early year, year to 18 months, two years of the life cycle is new hardware. But once we get past that, that should just be the norm for these games because the devs can take advantage of it. Yeah, exactly. Harris. There's a line in the sand. That's the moment where I'm just going to look <laughs> at you and be like, I want this and I want it all the time. It's right. But yeah, yeah, I agree with Paris. I think we're in that in-between stage where I'm not really uptight about it because I understand where we are going with, you know, we'll call current and next gen, whatever you want to call the console cycles we're in the middle of right now. I do have that understanding, but I do want to get to a point one day where it is 4K60 all the time, unless you as the developers are really trying to create something different with a 30 frames per second. But I'd like to see 60 plus all the time locked in on these next gen yep. games. That would be great. But Gary, we'll move off that talk because that was a lot of fun. Um, before we get to housekeeping, I know you played one more game and it's a game that was very near and dear to my heart over 2020. So why don't you share that with everybody what you got lost in? Yeah, Mike. I so again, Yakuza. I could. I, I said to, to to Greg Miller earlier this week, like, put me on a ten hour game cast because my God, I and that, I barely even scratched the surface. It's so much. I've I've, I've been playing. I got maybe a hundred hours in Yakuza right now, and the and the game is still treating me like I'm in the tutorial. Like, here's something else. Here's a new. <laughs> here's a new thing. Hey, did you know you did you know there's a cart racer? We'll, we'll, we'll just what? stick you and Imran in a room and y'all just, oh just talk about God. it for an entire there's day. There's a whole business <laughs> management simulation that's like a sixty dollar game. Just buy it itself that's like hidden inside of it it's just incredible i'm really really blown away by it. and again let's not get derailed the other game mike that i was glad to talk to you about briefly before the show because i know you streamed a little bit and very few people i know have played it i had so much fun with it i played on playstation 5 but it's also on xbox um is man eater the man eating shark game i had a ton of fun with that game it's only the second game ever uh, Spider-Man being the other one that I've ever uh, got a platinum trophy on. I got every license plate, every collectible. Very few games make me want to go around and like collect everything and 100% it. But I did on that, but like so much fun, you know, going around like terrorizing people, eating people, like tearing up, you know, fishing boats and getting hunted by shark killers. It has this terrific, terrifically fun um, uh, presentation to it where the whole thing's kind of done in the style of like a Discovery Week, uh, sorry, Discovery Channel Shark Week kind of show but like a comedy version where chris parnell does all of the narration i just had a blast with it i i really really enjoyed it and i say if you if you're looking for like a game that's just like fun to like switch your brain off and just have a blast with i highly recommend man eater a lot of fun i love man eater that was actually one of my favorite games of 2020 and uh it's touted as a shark pg that's a capital r in shark to make shark rpg if you didn't get that one a fun play on words that i loved <laughs> from tripwire and the team but yeah, it is Grand Theft Auto, but you're a shark and it's a giant open yeah. world with different environments, different underwater worlds that you get to explore. And you go from a small pup all the way up to the legendary great white shark that you are. And it is fun every single moment of it. Funny you say that you platinumed it over on the Xbox side for me where I played it. I That was the first game I actually actively 
tried to 100%, got the 1,000 gamer score, and enjoyed every single moment of it. They had a great optimization patch as well. So if you can catch this game on sale, I know it was on PS Plus just a couple months ago where you could pick it up with that subscription service. But over on the Xbox side, if you can find this game on sale, this is a really good game for a weekend, for a week, something that's fun. You can turn your brain off and just chomp, chomp, chomp away. So I'm really glad that you brought it up, Gary, because that was one of my favorite games of last year. Yeah, I had, year. A couple, I had a couple of people when I was talking about it on Twitter last week saying that they didn't like that it, was, it wasn't it was real, very realistic and it was kind of goofy. I love that. I love that it's kind of like half Discovery Channel half sci-fi channel you know like you know sharknado like because you can you can level up your shark to the point where it's basically a ridiculous mutant shark from one of these bad sci-fi shark type movies with like you know bioelectric powers and you know it's it's great it's so silly and crazy like the whole tone of the game is really goofy and comedic almost like it's like the saints row of shark games if that makes any sense like it, it just all it cares about is like is this fun and and i and i like games that just I, embrace the, <laughs> it's why i like yakuza as well just like it's so goofy i just love the silliness of it. i love that you said it's the saints row of shark games as if like shark games are <laughs> like other a shark genre. Games. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 exactly thanks baron it's right well that, that he, was actually one of the th i was like man why isn't this a genre like why why did it take this long for a game developer to to to, to say you know what would be fun being a man-eating shark and just tearing shit up. Like, how did it take to like 2020 to figure that out? Because it really is a home run as a game concept. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, you said it really well, Gary. I was going to say what it feels like to me is like when we used to play Grand Theft Auto 3 and we moved on in that series and all of a sudden Saints Row came in and shook it up and it was like, we're yeah. going to put fun at the forefront. That's yeah. what this is, truly and honestly. It is Grand Theft Auto, but you're a man-eating shark doing all sorts of crazy, wacky, fun stuff. And they put the fun first which is the big priority for me always when we're gaming because I love fun. And I hope, I really hope that Tripwire Interactive got enough pats on the backs. I hope that they celebrated that game and I hope that they make another one. That yeah, game I'd like to see really, some really DLC cool. or a sequel, anything. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun. Great time. Paris, did you play that before we jump into the show? No, I have not played it. So okay. after hearing, hearing you talk about it, <laughs> check it out. Highly the, recommended it. The shark I, genre. I only, I only picked it up because it was on PS Plus, so I didn't, yeah. you know, got it for free. I'd love to see it pop on Game Pass so more people can discover it. Ooh, that would be a great home for that. But you know what this home is? It's all about Xbox. This is the Kind of Funny X-Cast. A little housekeeping news for you. The Kind of Funny X-Cast posts each and every Saturday at 6 a.m. West Coast, Best Coast time on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com and on podcast services around the globe. Please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Like the video, share it with your friends. And also we're on podcast services. So leave a nice review. Let us know what you enjoy. Is it Paris and his incredible voice? Is it Gary Witta with his awesome shark PG fun? <laughs> Is it Barrett coming in on the ones and twos? Let me know in those reviews because they mean the world to all of us. And of course, this week's episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast is sponsored by Upstart, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's jump in to today's dashboard. We got a whole lot to talk about, but I really want to get down to one thing, and that's, it is February. Black History Month is here upon us, and it's time to talk about that. It's time to elevate these voices, and most of all, it's time to have a conversation. So this week, Kind of, or kind of funny, it's not only spotlighting black voices all around the industry here as a company, but Xbox is as well. So I wanted to take a moment, open up the floor to Paris to give us a little insight and tell us what Xbox is doing and what that means. No, I, I appreciate that. And like like you said, it's Black History Month. Um, and it over the next 28 days, uh, there's obviously going to be a lot of conversations just about black history, just the state of everything that, that that's going on and here in the United States, you know, with people of color, things like that, diversity, everything. But I do want to say, I, I, I do want to give a, a shout to Xbox and other platforms out there that are taking this month to spotlight uh, black creators like Xbox, even specifically, they're going to open up the Xbox, the Xbox Twitch channel, and they're going to have various black creators on there giving them the spotlight, you know, to basically show off their creativity, their talent, you know, via the Xbox platform, which I think is a great thing. They're obviously going to do other things during the month as well. I even saw that Sarah Bond, um, who you had on the, on the show, which I was on that episode, but who you had on the show, um, she wrote a very, I, I, I love what she wrote, just basically talking about her experience, you know, obviously being a person of color in this industry and the things that Microsoft and other companies need to do moving forward to continue to get that message out there. So the only thing, and I don't want to get too preachy on this, other than to say, you know, 
I get it. It's Black History Month. Even, even myself, I'll, I'll be appearing on various various platforms. Like I'll be on Rooster Teeth next week uh, as a part of a panel and some other things that haven't been announced yet. But it's fantastic that we have Black History Month, that it is a time for people to educate themselves, to people to listen and understand, like me being an African-American, what it's like to be black in this country, right? What we go through and just on a gaming platform, you know, what there's so many other talented people out there that never get that spotlight put on them. So this is an opportunity for that to happen and I applaud it. But the one thing that I've talked about a lot is let's not stop on February 28th. Let's not flip a switch on March 1st and go back to quote unquote regularly scheduled programming. And then on February 1st, the following year, all right, it's Black History Month again. Let's keep that conversation going. I understand it's gonna be amplified over the next month, but let's keep that conversation going. Let's keep spotlighting people of color and diverse voices throughout the entire year, right? Not to mention, even at a creator standpoint, let's get more diverse voices in a position of leadership in gaming as well. Being on the developer side, be it on the publisher side, it doesn't matter. We need to continue this conversation. And, and I always say, we can't do it alone. We all have to do it together. It, it, it's a combined effort if we're going to be able to make any type of change in this industry and in this world. So like I said, I, I don't want to get too preachy. I hope I, I, hope I wasn't on that, but um, this is an important month, and uh, I hope the people that are tuning into this can appreciate that. And I, I personally want to give thanks even to just Kind of Funny, because Kind of Funny has been a pioneer in spotlighting diverse voices. Even what Kind of Funny is doing every Friday now is the type of thing that we need to see in this industry. And even IGN as an example, because I owe a lot to them as well on a personal level. So um, again, it's Black History Month. I, I, I do apply what Xbox is doing. I do apply like Twitch right now. They're handing out a lot of partnerships. We need to see more of that throughout the year. So hope that made sense. Yeah, yeah. Paris, that made total sense. Thank you so much for standing up and speaking about that. And it gave me goosebumps because yes, you got to challenge yourself every single day to be better and step outside your comfort zone and go out there and lend a hand, spotlight diverse voices. And uh, now's the time and let's keep that going no matter what month it is, 24-7, 365. Thank you so much, Paris, on that one. Uh, some fun stuff as well, keeping it kind of kind of funny focused, but a cool little collaboration coming up during the month of February. IO Interactive has posted a fun February roadmap and what to expect. And our good friend Blessing Jr., of course, from kind of funny's PlayStation, I love you, XOXO. We have a fun one here. So I'm going to read you what is happening in February with Hitman 3 and how kind of funny is involved in it. Most of all, how you, the best friends and the viewers out there, can get involved. So, coming from the IO Interactive blog post, it says, we're adding new and free content to the game every week in February for all Hitman 3 players. Look out for featured contracts coming from Min Max and Kinda Funny, two new escalations that will challenge your approach, and an elusive target contract in Sapienza that includes two targets. Now, I know that sounds pretty quick but there's a lot of content coming your way and most of all i wanted to take a moment and highlight what we are doing at kind of funny with these awesome featured contracts got to give a big shout out to blessing jr who worked this out with io interactive he's been loving hitman 3 we've been loving hitman 3 and he got something really really fun going on so of course this week you'll see min max is going to have featured contracts over in dubai and at the end of the month kind of funny is going to have featured contracts in Dartmoor, and you have an opportunity to have one of your featured contracts kind of spotlight with kind of funny. So here's the deal. This month, throughout the month, we will be taking you, the best friends. You will have the opportunity to go and create your own featured contract in the level of Dartmoor. Remember, it must be in Dartmoor, and this is how it's going to go. Myself and Blessing, we're going to create our own two contracts that will be featured, but we wanted to take three more from the community. So we're gonna take one from Xbox, one from PC, and one from PlayStation. So you all have the opportunity, no matter what console you're playing on, to create your own featured level and send it into us. We'll play it on stream. We will figure out which ones are the best. And then we're gonna send them to IO Interactive to be spotlight during our kind of funny week. They will be playable on all consoles. So it doesn't matter what console you're on, everybody's gonna have the opportunity to play your contract, which will be really, really fun. Now, here is the catch. Some of the things I want you to remember. The best contracts are the ones with a cool story or briefing 
to support them. Typically, contracts with full five targets, all with disguise, disguise requirements and weapon kill requirements, tend to get overcomplicated and difficult to follow. So fun should win out over everything else. Remember, we're all kind of funny audience here, and we love those inside jokes. And I want you to keep those in there. But remember, everybody that has Hitman 3 is going to play these contracts. So Johnny Ace, Gary, Paris, those are cool names to bring up, and we want that. But you don't have to overdo it because everybody around the globe is going to play that. And they might not know who Snowbike Mike is. Let's remember that when you make these contracts, okay? Then, of course, it goes without saying, but we do not want any contracts or briefings that could be considered in any way sensitive or offensive in nature. But a really awesome one, and Paris kind of said it over there. He says, man, that's really cool. A fun one during the month of February that you, the best friends, can get involved in. You will go create a contract in Dart, man, no matter what console you're on, and you're going to send it to kindoffunny.com slash hitman. I'm going to head up the Xbox side. Blessing will be on PlayStation and Roger will be on PC. We're going to take all of your levels. We're going to play them and we're going to choose one from each one to be featured with mine and blessings. Made five kind of funny contracts for IO Interactive and Hitman 3 during this month. Pretty cool stuff. A lot of talking there. A lot of explanation. Paris, you said it. What, what do you think? That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's really cool. I, I love, I mean, I love that it, just Hitman 3, the game itself, is able to just extend the life of the game and include the community with it. And obviously, I'm, I'm loving what kind of funny is doing to collaborate with that. And again, shout out to Blessing. I think that's just such an awesome opportunity to be able to do that. So yeah, man, if you're in the community, absolutely. S submit it. Do it. It, it. It'll be a blast. It'll be a lot of fun. Gary, with a you know, you have created so many movies, so many iconic storylines. I mean, when we get behind a, an IO Interactive and a Hitman game, what, what could you whip up? Are you pretty excited about the idea of creating your own storyline in Dartmoor? I have Hitman 3. I see everyone playing it. Um, it's the next one on my list. Again, the problem is there's too many good games out there right now. I don't know how long yeah. Yakuza is going to, gonna. gonna <laughs> I, I can't step away from it. But when it's done, <coughs> excuse me. Hitman is next on my list. I didn't even know this was a thing where you could, I guess you can create these, these user created missions. Um, but yeah, as a, as you know, as a narrative guy, as a storyteller, that's, that's a really, really fun concept. My first thought is, could I create a mission where you got to hunt down and kill the guy who decided how much usable hard drive space the PlayStation five was going to have? Because I feel like that, I feel like that would be really popular. God, Gary, <laughs> Gary taking shots at the other side. Okay, Gary. Okay. My man, I don't that's think been, that's, he, I, I don't that's think been really bugging me lately. Mike juggling, shuffling and juggling around the games. Every time I want to install something new, it's like, nah, you got to get rid of something else. It's like, it's driving me crazy. And there's no, and there's no way to upgrade it. Like you, there's, there's no option yet. One I day, know one day we'll get that upgrade. I know it's Gary. expensive, <laughs> but for the extra 200 bucks, you can go double your hard drive space in an Xbox series X. Boom, like that, slot it in the back, you're done. It takes literally two seconds. I got my screwdriver at the ready for whenever PlayStation decides that I'm going to be able to upgrade the hard drive on my PlayStation 5, but right now it's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, Gary, do you want to get into what grinds my gears? Because I was going to save it for an upper episode, it. Oh but you, you bring it up. and so yeah, I, 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 I feel like I keep derailing this. No, this that's all right. Up. You know what? It's nice to have you both back. It's an exciting <laughs> Friday. We got Super Bowl on the way. We got the weekend right around. Why not have some fun? And so... That is interesting you say that, Gary, because I've been thinking in my mind lately as I download Gears 5, as I download Madden, as I look over at Division over on the PlayStation side, and I said to myself, you know what grinds my gears lately is not only the usable hard drive space on that PlayStation that you said that can't be corrected similar over here on the Xbox side where you have the memory card now, which is a huge blessing, right? But a lot of things grind my gears lately. Ready for this, Gary? I don't like that I'm currently downloading games over on the PlayStation side. And yes, I know this is an Xbox podcast, but all of a sudden I'm playing Spider-Man as the PS4 version. You know what I right. mean? Like, let's oh, just get this dialed me. in. Yeah. Let's get this locked in. I'm on the PS5, download the PS5 game. I'm sick of us in 2020 not being able to cross play with different platforms, right? I got, Greg Miller wants to play Division and I'm stuck on Xbox. I can't play with him. We got to move on past that. It's time, it's time, it's time. And then most of all, I have now downloaded Gears 5 about three different times over the past couple of months since launch. And for some odd reason, and I respect the idea of saving hard drive space and choosing what to download, what not to download. What I'm really grinding my gears with is when I download Gears 5 and then all of a sudden it says it's downloaded and I click on it and only half of it is downloaded or a quarter of it is downloaded. I really respect that I can, you know, pick and choose, but don't tell me the game is downloaded when only half of it is downloaded, right? Just put all of it on there. I'll choose what to uninstall, what to go from. 
I absolutely hate that lately, and it's really upset me. And my final grind my gears is Madden 21. Here it is. We got uh -oh. the next gen version. We got the old <laughs> gen version. I'm trying to play the yard with my boys because SpongeBob is out there, right? It's going to be crazy. And it's telling me that I got the wrong version. I'm like, no, I got the optimization patch. Do you have the optimization patch, homie? Oh, I don't see that one. Well, that's why we can't play together. And why are we crossing wires in 2020 on a new console saying I don't have the right version? Download the right version and let's get this done. And I appreciate you listening to my grind my gears because that has been on my mind lately, Gary. And you hit you hit me, Gary. You know I don't like to get too negative, but that hit me, Gary. That hurt me right there. Listen, let's let's just take a moment to acknowledge that these are high class problems, and we're living in a wonderful world. <laughs> this is the best that gaming's ever been, right? These are these are champagne problems, and we should just acknowledge that right away before we start whining about this. But you're right. Listen, compromises are really a in a big way what's defining this this generational switch and, and generational changes. Are never seamless, you know. There, there's always there's always a, a few bumps in the road, and we're and we're living in the middle of that right now. But there definitely are a bunch of things that are, that are grinding my gears as well, Mike. The the hard drive space is an issue. It's an issue on both. It's more much more of an issue on PlayStation Five right now because there is just less space available, and there's no easy upgrade path like there is on on X. So point Microsoft on that one. Um, I do also agree that there's a lot of confusion about which version <laughs> of the game are you even playing. I think, you know, but both of the consoles try to label it. You know, it will say PS4 if it's a PS4 game um, and it will put it in a separate folder or whatever. Um, I think Microsoft does a slightly better job of labeling them with the little XS logo in the corner that tells you that this is optimized. Even that's been confusing, though. When I first got um, Square's um, Avengers game, when I first downloaded that, that had the optimized logo in the corner, but it wasn't. There's no, there's no optim, there's no Series X optimized version of Avengers available yet. They're still working on it, and eventually that badge went away because they realized they think that they had mislabeled it. So there's some confusion there as well. It's been great to see some of these, some of our favorite games that came at the at the tail end of the last generation, like The Division, like Control, getting these uh, these glow ups. You know, where the, you know, everything is old is new again, and it's a great way. You know, I'm excited to go back and play The Division because you know to see it with the next gen graphics, that's really cool. So I'm grateful for that. But it has been a little bit sloppily. Uh, handled and then again the compromise that we talked about at the top of the show resolution or frame rate we're still this is a generation so far that it's it's been a very messy transition it's largely been defined by compromises uh do you want resolution or frame rate which game do you want to delete from your hard drive because you know to make way for this new one uh, especially on the series s where it's definitely a big problem they, 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 i think it's probably the worst offender in terms of uh the usable hard drive space you're lucky to get three or four triple a games on there before you've got to start juggling so um, it's it, it it's going to get better. I think we're going to see console revisions um, midway through this generation with more hard drive space as it becomes more economically viable as the, as, as the hardware prices uh, come down. But yeah, right now, as much as I'm loving these new consoles, there's a lot of little irritations and and, and pet peeves um, that come along the way. I don't know, Paris. What's what, what's what's like what's like your biggest? What's bugging you the most right now? I want a true family sharing plan for xbox oh, oh my god don't get me started yeah, yeah. <laughs> go get it started get because, started because right, now's the time because in my house right now we're juggling a series x s and a one x right my account needs to be logged in on all three for them to truly take advantage of everything right and i'm constantly getting logged out because one of them is on playing not to mention you also have the xbox app on the pc it'd be nice with game pass ultimate and just everything they're doing if they had a tr because remember that was what they were going to do in 2013 originally and then they backed away from it but if they had just a family plan for multiple users like netflix four people can be logged in at once they should have that as a family plan where i can designate you know two or three other accounts that are that are on there and we're all logged in at the same time we can all take advantage of game pass and everything else that they offer yeah i would be happy I think all That's these it. companies have tried to find some kind of compromise that doesn't let it become the Wild West where anyone can play any game. I understand they have to lock it down yeah. a little bit. Um, but, like, for example, like, my wife loves to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla, right? And we have a, right. we do have a second Xbox in another room where, you know, if we're both playing games at the same time, but she can't do it. She had, like, so I, I have Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Valhalla belongs to my Xbox account. Even though she's my wife and she's in my family, when she tries to launch it on her profile so she can get her achievements... No, sorry, you don't own this game. Your husband does. Exactly. What is that? Yeah. We're husband and yeah. wife. What's mine <laughs> yeah. is hers. Why can't I just like, designate like a like Apple does this way better? Like you can have a family plan on Apple where like if I have Apple Music, 
She has Apple Music. If I download a TV show, she can watch it because you've designated like a family group. Like, yeah. why is I didn't I feel like it doesn't feel like it, it doesn't seem like it should be this hard. Yeah, because at the Apple, the whole iCloud thing is the perfect example of this. We're all under I'm the the master account and I have all right. the sub accounts. We all share the same stuff. Anyone yeah. buys something, look, when the kids want to buy something, I have to approve it. And then it's taking it from thing. They they should be able to do that on Xbox. And like I said, this this is champagne problems. I get it. But it'd be nice if it was there. It'd be a nice quality of life feature. I don't think you this know? is a champagne problem. This is basic stuff. If I'm playing Call of Duty, this literally happens, I'm playing Call of Duty Black Ops in the living room, and then I get an alert in the middle of the game. Oh, sorry, you need to get kicked off of your account because <laughs> yes. your wife wants to play Assassin's Creed. What the yeah. fuck is that? It's 2021. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> so, well, that, 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 that's grinding my gears. There you go. There we that's go. a good we're one, all, Paris. I didn't even think about that one. Moments. That's the most annoying one. Yeah, that's really good that you both brought that up, being, you know, when we had that conversation just a couple weeks ago of, hey, people want your perspectives as parents with, you know, kids in your life that are gamers. And what does that feel like here in 2020? And that's a really good one to bring up. And where do we go from here? Champagne problems or not, it is the future. It is the next gen. What do we do and how do they continue to elevate this service, especially when they're promoting the ecosystem, right? Because in Paris's household, those three consoles might be a PC one day too, might be on the mobile app. There's a lot going on and we need to make sure everybody can play, everybody can get on and not have to just buy things all the time on different accounts. Tell so me. By the way, Mike, you're right about the other point where, you, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the notification will pop during an Xbox download. Hey, the game's ready to play. You know, when you'll sit, like, there's a little bar like 20% across the bar that'll say, it's ready to play at this point and another notification will pop. Hey, you can play it at this point. But, and, it, and I know it's different from game to game, but in a lot of games when I've tried to do that, it's kind of bullshit. Like the version of the game that's ready to play is barely functional. You really do need to wait for the whole thing to download. Tell me, Paris, what you got? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say the, the, the resolution, and it still doesn't 100% resolve it, is my oldest daughter, because she has the One X, I, I got her Game Pass. I, I got her, her own Game Pass sub to right. kind of solve it a little bit. <laughs> nice but, still, <laughs> but still, with the other two, if they're trying to play Skate 3, because God knows that gets played a thousand times in my house, Hell yeah. it, it's still logging me out and doing all this other stuff. So it I would pay a little bit extra it. for a family game pack. I, I would too. We all could have that. And we could, uh, my wife likes to get her own achievements, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. What am I supposed to do? Not get married? Come on, this should be my problem. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what you're saying right there is, is a perfect example. Game Pass Ultimate is what, 15 bucks right now? What, right? Right. If they had a quote unquote $20 family right. plan. Yeah, that lets like four or five members of a I'm household or something. Yeah. As, as, as a weird example, because uh, like God knows like how much shit Nintendo gets for their online services. Like they even thought of like doing a family plan with their on services for switch. And it's, it's just interesting yeah. that they were able to think of that with how bare bones <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. the rest of their online services. Uh, and yeah. then like not, not these other platforms you think yeah. it would if be. You're get, if you're getting stuff. out gamed in the online space by Nintendo, you're doing something <laughs> yeah, wrong. It's a bad move. <laughs> yeah. That's some good stuff. Well, that is a good little, uh, what grinds our gear section going on right there so thank you both for bringing that and uh, of course don't forget about the hitman collab but one thing that doesn't grind our gears our incredible sponsor for this week so let's take a moment for a quick ad read this episode of the kind of funny x cast is sponsored by upstart you know that credit card the one you're afraid to look at to see what the balance is if you've been avoiding your debt it's time to confront it upstart can help you face it and finally pay it off last year showed us that you never know what life is going to throw at you and if you used credit cards to pay for unexpected expenses, it can be overwhelming to manage that debt. Take control with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people has used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. When Greg moved to San Francisco 50 years ago, the loan he took out didn't factor in anything but his credit score. He got a terrible rate and Upstart could have really helped him. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as one business day. If your debt is taking over your life, it's time for a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash kindoffunny. 
That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash kind of funny. Welcome back, everybody. Let's get it going right now. Our next story, Paris and Gary, we're going to bring this thing back towards an Xbox side right now. We may have a small hint at how many Xbox Series X and S consoles are out in the wild because we had a fun little Twitter exchange from our good friend of the show, Ryan McCaffrey over at IGN. And of course, one of the biggest video game analysts on the planet, Daniel Lamad. So quick one for you. During a Twitter exchange from IGN's Ryan McCaffrey and video game analyst, Daniel Lamad, Ryan tweeted out the numbers of units shipped for the PS5 being at 4.5 million and being curious as to what Xbox and Microsoft may have out with the Xbox side. Of course, we do know over the past couple of years, Xbox has really pulled back on sharing those kind of numbers, those sales figures with us. And so Daniel Lamont tweeted back in response and said, quote, take a bit over 1 million off the PS5 numbers and you won't be far off, end quote. Paris, that's a pretty high number, 3.5 million, give or take, maybe a little bit less. That's a pretty good number here in the middle of a COVID-ridden world where as well, if you do remember, Xbox started their productions a little bit later than PlayStation as well. So where are you feeling at that like guesstimate number from Daniel coming in with Ryan and this Twitter exchange? Oh, it seems about right. And just the feedback that I see on social media all the all the time is they literally can't make enough. So it just sounds like that's the amount that they just can make. Because I think what they're even saying now, there's not they're not gonna have more until the summer or something like that. It's gonna be very scarce until then. So I mean, it's a decent number. I mean, you know, we're still early in the generation and all that, but the fact that we're dealing with COVID and just everything else that's going on in the world right now, I mean, to even have that many out there in the field is a pretty good number for them. It shows demand is obviously high because people are, are scalping them and doing everything else. It can't make enough. Yeah, it is the shipped number, right? That was one we've always yeah. talked about. It's like shipped as opposed to sales, but I think you hit it very well. It's like, we know these consoles have been red hot and they have been selling off the shelves, whether it be two scalpers or at your family homes. But like these consoles are not staying on shelves. So it's pretty, you know, it's almost easy to just take that leap and be like, well, I guess, you know, shipped is going to mean sales for sure, because you're not seeing yeah. them on shelves at all. So that's an easy jump. Keeping up with the financials. I got another fun financial roundup. This coming from IGN by Matt Kim. And this is talking about Microsoft financials for the year. So let's take a look really quick. Microsoft has posted record profits this quarter, including a boom in its gaming sector, which has revenue revenues up 51% in the most recent financial earnings report for the period ending on December 31st, 2020. Microsoft shared that revenue increased by 17% to reach $43.1 billion and $15 billion in profit. Hardware saw the biggest growth thanks to the launch of the Xbox Series X and S. Microsoft says the gaming hardware segment grew 86% thanks to the new hardware, though the company hasn't shared exact numbers. Meanwhile, Microsoft reported that revenue has grown 51% overall in games with Xbox game content and services revenue up 40%. The growth has been attributed to third-party titles, Xbox Game Pass subscriptions, and first-party titles. Finally, according to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, during the conference call, Xbox Game Pass now has 18 million subscribers. Harry Witta, you and I, when we started this podcast with Alana, we have now seen this number of Game Pass subscribers skyrocket. 18 million. What do you think about that number? Especially one where you, me, and Paris just, you know, two weeks ago when we talked about that Xbox Live Gold situation, and we said, well, how many gold, how many Game Pass subscribers could there really be? 18 million on the side of Game Pass. Wow, oh, wow. Pretty incredible there. Yeah, it's massive. Gaming is blowing up. And of course, you know, that's not a surprise to any of us who have been in this business or, you know, either professionally or as hobbyists for a long time. Gaming's, you know, been on a growth trajectory since the 1970s. It's only ever gone. You know, we had a, you know, a, a small crash, you know, when Atari died and Nintendo uh, took over. But for the most part, gaming's only ever been on a growth trajectory. But this last 12 months or so, yeah, it's really seen exponential growth. Um, obviously, a lot of that is to do uh, with the pandemic. You know, you see massive increase in uh, just online data traffic associated with online gaming. A lot of people, and we've seen a lot, a lot of words have been written about this. A lot of people that might not otherwise have gotten into gaming, you know, nothing to do. Oh, I'll give this a try. And now they're gamers. You know, they're, oh man, and now they're hooked. 
Uh, and that's been amazing to see. You, you, you're right, 18 million uh, Game Pass subscribers. What is it, 31 million copies of Animal Crossing sold? It's just absolutely insane. I have no doubt that Animal Crossing would have would would have would have put up huge numbers um regardless but i but it's uh, to me it's obvious that those numbers have been inflated uh by the greater need that like, people just want something to do and you know and and, and gaming has been a lifeline for an all, awful lot of people it's been one of the, one of the silver linings of this of this of this awful awful um year that we've all been uh living through uh for the past 12 months uh so you know it's been it's been great to see in terms of the console sales it's kind of hard to I, I think to really make much sense of these numbers right now um you know it doesn't really tell you how much demand is out there because right now demand is massively outstripping the supply you can't get in these consoles right now and a lot of the ones that have been sold let's be honest are probably sitting in a lockup garage somewhere in las vegas waiting <laughs> to be resold because you know that's, that's how a lot of them are being sold right now they're obviously all going to sell through eventually the only question is how much uh, money these scalpers and resellers are going to end up uh making but yeah it's it's ne there's never been a better time to be a gamer the next gen consoles you know we've been belly aching about them the whole time but they're they're incredible there's there's too many it's what is it february and there's too many good games to play when's the last time you could say that in february there's just too much good stuff out there we really are living in in i think a true golden age of video gaming the next gen is only going to get better um i can't wait to get to a point where the supply finally catches up with demand and you can you know not necessarily physically walk into a store because we're probably not going to be doing much of that until the back half of the year after everyone's vaccinated and we go back to something like normal but you know when you can just like go to amazon or walmart or best buy or wherever and just say and, and, and look up a playstation 5 or a series x and it just says in stock now delivers in one to two days like that day like, oh, when that day comes then i think you're going to see the real numbers right now everything's supply constrained so i think as much as we're seeing the stories about these explosive growths uh, this explosive growth we're only really seeing half of the story because they, like, just like paris said they literally can't make them fast enough yeah paris one for you as we take a look at these numbers of course we've got to kind of take a step back because we bring up microsoft we think of xbox this is a <laughs> giant company right you hear those numbers i threw around but like we're talking all of Microsoft, but still a pretty nice feather in Phil Spencer's and the team's hat over with the gaming division with Xbox. When you see this kind of growth, you see this demand. And is this something when you look back on it, do you contribute it to COVID? Do you contribute it to the gamer first mentality that they've brought to the table? When we look back on the last generation, a lot of people were saying, oh man, like Xbox is done for good. There's no way they're ever going to come back. They're going to eventually fold and now we kind of have a, a different storyline as we move into this next generation. Where do you think that all falls? And what do you think the team is saying right now after looking at that earnings report? I think, I think it's a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Clearly, COVID, like, like Gary was saying, people just want something to do. And video games, obviously, is, is an escape. And it's something you can do in your home and still be able to connect with people. But I would also counter that by saying, if you just look at the track record that Xbox has been doing the past few years we've talked about in the past just the services that they've been building just the way they've been presenting this new hardware and just the track that they were on people were going to be interested in this i think regardless of if there was COVID or not i think even in a non COVID world right now you probably could not walk in a store and pick up an xbox they, they simply can't make them fast enough so um i'm, I'm sure everyone internally is happy with the growth i i think clearly you look at the financials they're they're on an upward climb i mean they're they're doing exactly what they said they were going to do and yeah maybe maybe COVID is you know the delay of halo didn't help but it didn't hurt either because i think phil spencer himself even said that was they were okay with delaying it because they were confident they were still obviously going to be able to sell out of hardware and all that and now people have something to look forward at the end of this year as far as a, a big triple a game so like gary was even saying there's just there's, there's too much to play right now anyway so um yeah i i think the people internally at xbox are probably pretty happy with where they are and they're probably looking ahead think it's going to get even better yeah it's really great to look at where we are right now celebrate that moment as the team with xbox and microsoft and what they've created and what they've done with the turnaround and it will be exciting to see as we look forward, what's next, right? We're always yeah. going to ask what's next, what's more, what can we do? And I really want to take a look at like, what is this next shift that we're going to see as we talked about with the Xbox Live Gold situation happening and then, you know, how it transpired and finished out. But there is a line in the sand. There's Game Pass Ultimate, there's Xbox Live Gold, and they're both going to have two different numbers. How do you merge that over? What will be that tipping point? 
to merge everybody over to that. And what is the big number that we're shooting for? 18 million subscribers on Game Pass Ultimate. That's an outrageous number. What is the next step and what will drive that there? And a fun one we're going to talk about at the end of the show is the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate perks that we're going to talk about and what they've been doing to elevate that service. And I want to pose the question to you both of, you know, we talk about Game Pass all the time. We really enjoy the service, but what more do you want from Game Pass? What more could drive this number from 18 million to X amount? Or how can we take the number from, you know, Xbox Live Gold and shift them over here to get that number higher? So in your minds, is there something that's missing from Game Pass as a service? Or what is the big factor for 18 million to come on over to this side? Paris, do you want to kick us off? Do you have anything sure, on your mind? Sure, yeah. sure, I do. Because this is a lot of the chatter that that I do see just on social media, et cetera, when we talk about Xbox. What has their reputation been from the past generation? Xbox doesn't have games. That, that's that been the reputation. They clearly know that because we're seeing all the studio acquisitions, just the games they've already announced. The thing that is going to put Game Pass over the top is quality AAA experiences that you can't play anywhere else. You have to play them on an Xbox platform. And when they get to that point where you can point to, like we're talking about Forza Motorsport, Avowed, Fable, Perfect Dark, Halo, on down the line of just these exclusive experiences. Like I love Game Pass because there's a great discovery there with AA games. Like, you know, we talked about the medium, obviously, and these independent titles that we played. Those are all great, but the fear with Game Pass, as you look at it today, is, is this just going to be the service of good enough or is this going to be the service of great? And when I say that is we need more Gears 5 Hive Buster experiences to come to, to Game Pass. We need Halo Infinite to truly be the flagship of everything that Xbox is doing. Fable has to knock it out of the park, Perfect Dark, etc. So that you're like, man. I could spend $60 a pop for this service, or I could just subscribe to Game Pass because look at all these amazing AAA experiences that are now being supplemented as well with these AA and independent experiences as well. I think to me, that's the thing that's going to put it over the top to where we're talking subscriber numbers, 50 million plus, as an example. I, I, I think that's going to be the thing that's going to push people forward. And I'll say one last thing. My worry with Game Pass is. Sure, we're seeing this $18 million number today. How many of those are, hey, I converted my gold for $1. And that runs out at the end of the year. Am I going to be compelled to now want to continue to pay that price? You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're going to have to see. And, and this is why I do think a game like Halo is going to be so important to them at the end of the year. What's going to be the incentive to those people to want to continue to be a subscriber to Game Pass at that point? So that was a lot, I know, but no, that that's was my great. Point. I mean, you got me excited because I think of the Bethesda acquisition, right? Like yeah. that's another big one we'll talk about. And you know, exactly. we've had we're still waiting for the the ink to dry. We're going over to the EU side now to get approval over there. But this most likely in all of our minds, it's all speculation, but this will go through, right? And then we're gonna have the hard conversation of exclusivity and if you go hard exclusivity, does that change the name of the game for Game Pass Ultimate? Does that raise us from 18 million subscribers to 25 or 30? Does this change it right there with this big acquisition or do we need more? When are these big AAA titles come out? When can we see that big boost? It's all super exciting and it seems like Xbox is making a lot of progress and headway over there with their first party studios and the games they want to see. And I think we've gotten a good range, but you're right, Paris. It's got to be the big AAA titles that will really drive the value in this. And it does start with Halo this November, December, whatever this holiday period for them is going to be, it will start with them. Gary, for you, when you look at your Game Pass offerings, is there a way you can elevate that to draw more eyes, more credit card numbers to, you know, s swipe their cards? I'll just touch on what Paris and I said earlier about how we'd like, I think we would both love to see some kind of family plan. It would be great to, to see them add that. I feel like that's, that's a box that wouldn't be too difficult to check. Uh, I'd happily pay five bucks more for some kind of you know family friendly thing so we can all play without having to worry about you know who's kicking you know each other off you know the console other than that you know man it's it's really hard to find too much to complain with you know we we talk about you know uh game pass on here like it's the home shopping channel really all that for one low price like because you can't believe it it really is that great um i, I want to say something else paris is right that xbox has struggled 
historically with the, this idea that there aren't enough great games. PlayStation's had that uh, as well over the years, depending on the generation you look at. As the Xbox One generation recedes now into the past and we step back and kind of look at it through the lens of historical perspective, that was a, I, that you know we were, we were talking earlier like what are your favorite games of the Xbox One generation? We struggled to come up with even a handful because yeah, I think if you look at it, we can all kind of agree, even as Xbox fans, Xbox One was kind of a whiff of a generation. It was kind of a swing and a miss. You know, they made all those mistakes at the beginning uh, with Connect and you know a lot of the the emphasis on media and a lot of the game sharing stuff that they had to uh, walk back. And you know, they made some some inroads uh in the in the later years uh but they struggled a lot and they're still ch- digging themselves out of that hole now with this next generation but i also want to make this point i think there are, there's too much emphasis on the big flagship quadruple a you know games like you know on the xbox you've got you know halo gears forza over on the sony side you know you've got uncharted and spider-man and these other you know uh, last of us these big um uh, uh platform exclusive system sellers and i get it those are the sexy games those are the ones that you actually put you know that you build the console bundles around that you put you know master chief's helmet on the back of the series xbox though those are like the super sexy top line games that sell the systems but you've got to look beyond that at the totality of what's on the platform i just opened up the xbox app on my on my uh on my pc here which basically has all the x the same games as are on the xbox and I'm literally kind of scrolling, 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 scrolling down here on my mouse. And the list just keeps going. Don't tell me there are no games on the Xbox or on Game Pass. There's a ton of games. It's just they're not the ones that we talk about all the time because they don't have the sexiest names attached to them. But I'm looking at, you know, like everyone right now is, is on my timelines uh, uh, freaking out about this game, Cyber Shadow, which is tremendous. That's on um, Game Pass. Deep Rock Galactic, Desperados. Three, Dragon Quest XI, uh, Mork Red, you know, Unto the End, Final Fantasy VII. The, the, the list goes on and on and on. Don't tell me there are no... If you don't think there are games on Xbox, you're not looking. There is a massive, massive library of games. I think when people talk about that, they're just talking about, like, the tiny sliver of, like, quadruple-A games at the very top, uh, as if there isn't, like, a massive amount of games underneath that that make up the difference. And uh, both Xbox and PlayStation right now have really, really, really healthy uh, indie ecosystems, and that's honestly where ninety percent of the time I'm uh, I'm spending a lot of my time playing those games. You know, the world doesn't begin and end with Halo, Forza, and Gears. Yeah, that's really well said, Gary. And actually, for me personally, right, as a gamer at heart, a gamer since I was a kid, and now as a young adult, right, I will always buy those big main ship games. Right, I'm always buying the quadruple A titles. I've always bought the triple A's. Why I'm in Game Pass is because of those smaller titles. Those are the games that anywhere from 10 to $40, where I'm like half in, half out. That's why I got Game Pass, because I want to try those without being punished in my wallet, right? If I don't like that game that I just bought for $30, man, I'm out $30. But with Game Pass, now I'm not afraid to try. And I think that's the biggest one for me, shifting my mindset of being a gamer, right? I would always buy the biggest and the baddest ones. But for me, with these lower level ones, that's where Game Pass gets me. That's where it gets me excited to try those games that I would be hesitant to buy And that means the world to me. And also, like you brought up with PC, right? Now I have it on my PC, my phone, my Xbox. And now I feel like I'm getting a lot of value out of my gaming sphere. And I feel like I'm at the center of an ecosystem. And that kind of mind shift shift or mind mind, you know, shift, I think is a big deal. Like you kind of got to change up your perspective and look at the bigger picture of what you're really getting and the value that you get and what that brings to you. Because in all honesty, we all were going to buy Halo. We all were going to buy Gears of War. We've always have. But now it's time to look a little bit deeper and say, man, those 50 games that Gary just listened, I would probably never buy those. But now I get to try them. Paris, what do you That's think of a, that? I, uh, sorry, go ahead, go, Paris. No. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead on this. See, because I'm going to slightly push back on, on what both of you are saying. <gasps> I, I do feel <laughs> I do feel the Halos and the Gears and the big AAA games, and I'm going to equate this to, to Netflix or like Disney Plus as an example, right? Disney Plus. It's it's the Marvel movies or like WandaVision. That's what gets you in the door to subscribe, right? But then it's those back catalog hidden gem things that get you to stay. So when when I think of Game Pass, it is the Halos and the Gears and, and all these eventually, I don't know, Starfield or whatever. Those are going to be the thing that get you in the door to say, you know what? Maybe I should subscribe to this thing. But it's then that discovery of the donut counties, the cyber shadows, you know, even a game like the medium with that we've talked about 
something I wouldn't necessarily buy, but I'll play it because it's on Game Pass. Those are the ones that get you to stay because you know you're going to get your big AAA experiences, but you're also going to find those hidden gems that you may have never known about without this kind of service. So I, I do think they both go hand in hand. And I do think right now, the art, and again, I'm, I'm just going by the conversations that I, I, I have. A lot of people push back when I talk about Game Pass going, yeah, but it's really just old games and any stuff. They, they don't. Ha- Xbox still doesn't have that game. They still don't have that game for me that gets me excited to want to invest into their ecosystem because that is what Game Pass is. You're investing into the Xbox ecosystem at that point. And, and I, I will be frank. I, I think if you go by the Xbox One history, like we said, name the game. I don't know what it is because... I thought Gears 4 was okay. I, you know, there's a there wasn't that game on Xbox One in the past what seven years or whatever it's been that said, yep, I should invest in Game Pass because there's this big AAA experience, right? Whereas I think they have a grand opportunity starting this year with a game like Halo Infinite to be that's that game. That's that game that I love, that I want to play. I'm gonna subscribe to Game Pass and I'll check out all the other stuff too. So just just my two cents on that. No, I mean, I, 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 what you just said, Paris, I don't think is really that contradictory to, to what Snowbike and, um, and I were just talking about, is that, yeah, you're always going to have those system sellers. And it's, and it's a good analogy that you make. You know, for Xbox, it's, it's Halo, Forza, and Gears. For Disney+, Plus, you know, it's Mandalorian and WandaVision. And that's the sizzle right. that gets you in the door. But, like, the, for me, like, D- Disney+, Plus is great, but not because of, like, one or two shows like Mandalorian or WandaVision, but because you go, oh, shit, like, pretty much every Disney and Pixar movie is on here right. and all these other things that I might, you know, and like all the kind of archival stuff. And there's all kinds of cool, weird and wonderful stuff that they're throwing on there because these companies have these massive, massive archives, these vaults. And now they're throwing everything on there. That's, that's kind of magical. I bought, see, I, I got into CBS all access because I wanted to watch Picard and discovery, but I've actually <laughs> spent most of the time watching like all the old Raymond Burr Perry Mason right, shows that right. are on there from the 1950s. Yeah. It's like, man, all this stuff's on there, all the old twilight zones, like all that shit's really, really cool. Um, so, and it's, and it, it's easy to build a marketing campaign around three or four flagship, you know, banner games like the halos, like the last of us type titles. Um, uh, than it is, you know, a vast library of stuff you may not have heard of. Uh, but you know, the point is you get both. And I just, I just think, I don't think we, t- we spend enough time talking about, you know, the, the games that are one step down from the, the really big, sexy ones that are easy to build a marketing campaign around. And again, the real, the real value of something like Disney plus, I mean, there's, there's a show on Disney plus that I've been raving around, raving about right now, uh, all week on Twitter called Bluey, which is a kid's animated show. Best, best, one of the best children's animated family shows I've ever seen in my life. You've got Disney plus go check out Bluey. They're not selling that as like a reason to get Disney plus, but once you're in the door and you start discovering these things, you realize what a tremendous value exactly. some of these services yeah, yeah. are. And again, just the, the, the idea of like risk-free discovery is the key to success of, 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 of services like Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. I'll go back to Man Eater. I, I, I wouldn't have paid money for Man Eater. It was, it, it, there wasn't enough out there in terms of the reviews of the conversation with me thinking, yeah, this is a $60 game. I tried it because it was essentially free. It was part of a service I already paid for. I thought, why not? Why not give it a try? It got, it, it got its hooks into me. And I'm so glad that I played it. That's a game. That's a great time that I had playing a game that I never would have experienced were it not available to me through a service like that. That's really the magic of those services. Yeah. I think you both, I think we all can agree. I think Xbox might be having a a really good opportunity here to be able to market it and sell it on both sides, right? The big sizzle sizzle reel games, the discoverability and those medium games. And like you said, Paris, I do agree. It is time for the big bad hitters to come out, right? They need that. They got to prove that. And it is pretty cool to think of like, you can get hyped up on either way you look at it, right? There's the big, bad sizzle result games that you love and that you're excited for. Hey, here's the discoverability of games you've never heard of. And Game Pass is that solution. It's pretty cool to think that like here in 2020, we have that option as gamers, Xbox and Microsoft are bringing that to the forefront and a whole lot of fun to be had. But bring those big games. I'm ready for in Paris. I want that is right. Let's talk about a really big game that I'm excited about. Finally. Coming on over, I guess it's hard to say finally because it was a PlayStation exclusive, but like we don't have a baseball game and I need a baseball (laughs) game. But let's talk about some sports for just a second because it's been a wild week here that hasn't been truly Xbox specific. But three big games I want to touch on right now. We're going to start with a quick sports block. So, of course, MLB The Show 21. 
We already knew it was official last year that it was going to come to Xbox, but the dream of a true baseball sim has become reality with the official date of MLB The Show being April 20th, 2020. MLB The Show has always been known as an outstanding PlayStation exclusive that is developed by Sony first-party team, Sony San Diego. This year, the series will come to Xbox and is boasting cross-platform play and cross-progression. The PlayStation blog has shared that only the Collector's Edition will feature next-gen upgrades, so make sure to go out and read into the Collector's Editions if you're looking for that upgrade and what that will be, but a really big deal right there, two big pieces. One, a first-party Sony exclusive crossing the border to come over to Xbox and bringing in an incredible baseball sim and that big sentence I just read, boasting cross-platform play and cross-progression. This has been one that's been sorely missed over on the Xbox side. We really don't have that great next-level baseball sim. And to have MLB The Show, a game that could be considered game of the year for the sports titles every single year, now coming over here, gets me really, really excited. They even showed off the Jackie Robinson editions, which will be really, really special to me. I thought that was great as a big baseball guy. Paris, I see you nodding your head. You're getting excited with me. What do you think about MLB The Show 21? I mean, it's reality now. It's coming. There's no yeah. ifs, ands, or buts. Here we go. So, so fun fact, uh, I, I live in San Diego area, and I worked right next door to Sony, to Sony San Diego, to, to the studio that made MLB The Show. So I'd see them all the time, you know, like on lunch break and all that kind of stuff. So that's fun. Obviously, the pandemic has changed everything. But um, I've been a huge MLB The Show fan. Uh, for years, um, I, I will fully admit I don't play sports games as much as I used to in the past. I don't know, probably four, four or five years. But it, it to me, it has always been the best sports simulator out there. So the way I look at this is this is now just going to expose that game to more people on the Xbox platform. And while the online play, you know, has always been laggy, it's been, yeah, been tough been, on been, baseball. It's a tough yeah, one on baseball. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's been some strikeout <laughs> fest going on, but. I mean, the fact that cross-play is there is great. So if the opportunity is there to be able to play with your friends on either platform, you can do it. And trust me, you do Road to the Show, best best sim experience you can do in, in a sports game. People people will love it. So I'm excited for it. This is a good thing. And then the Jackie Robinson thing with, you know, with the, is it the Collector's Edition? I believe it is. Yeah, I believe but, he's going to be the Special Edition. Well. Yeah, it, it's great. That's great, of course. I mean, obviously, with Black History Month being able to announce that, I mean, he is just a pioneer, not only in sports, but just literally in, in the world for what he did, you know, back during that time with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Of course, it needs to be celebrated. So I'm um, very happy to see. Gary Witta, I know you are more across the pond with your football, but what do you think about baseball over here and getting this special baseball sim coming to Xbox? It's a slight, yeah, it's a slightly different experience for me. I've never really, as a as as a spectator, as someone you know watching on TV or whatever, I've never really that in, engaged uh, with American sports that much. I've always seemed they've always seemed a little bit alien uh, to me. You know, in the UK or Europe or pretty much anywhere else in the world other than the, other than the US, you, you grow up with a completely different um, you know sports diet. You know, you grow up on obviously predominantly uh, soccer, you know, rugby and cricket and, and other games like that. And America has always been kind of unique. And no, no, we like these sports. You know, we, we, we play these different ones over here. Um, and I've never been super excited about it. I'm still not. I only found out that Super Bowl was this weekend because Paris told me right before the show. <laughs> um, well, what's interesting about it, though, is that video games somehow kind of do cross that barrier for me. I, I used to watch. I remember when they first brought American football to the UK, Channel 4 started broadcasting it. And I was like, I, 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 I'm kind of interested to see what this is all about. And I could never quite understand the rules or how the game works just from watching it on TV. But when I started playing, I remember it was Cinema Wears TV Sports Football on the Commodore Amiga. When I actually started playing it and interacting with it, that became, then I cl then it clicks. Oh, now I, okay, now I get it. Now that I'm actually doing it and interacting with it and playing it. Now that's actually how I learned to understand how the rules of American football work was by playing a game. And, my, and I kind of fell in love uh, with with baseball video games, I, tell you, I still remember vividly what it was. I was editor-in-chief of PC Gamer, EA Sports, Triple Play Baseball, 1998. That was the one that got its hooks into me. I played the hell out of that game. We used to play it in the PC Gamer office all the time. Bringing this now into the in, into the into modern times, one of the things I'm excited about for ML, MLB baseball is, yeah, I, I want to I, I enjoy playing baseball games. I always thought that it really really sucked. In particular, I don't know why it was just this one sport. If you like soccer, if you like American football, if you like hockey, if you like basketball, you can play it 
at the you know play the professional version of the game no matter what console you own the idea that for some reason mlb was always like you had no if you don't have the right console sorry if you don't have a playstation sony Xbox was just able to get that just, license like, you know like I just, it, yeah. but it but it sucked right that totally sucked so i'm so glad that's going away and i'm also really glad to hear that they're not just like making it available but my god finally cross play this is my yep. other big pet this is the pet peeve episode i guess but like the idea like when i picked up the division I chose to play it on Xbox because I had some friends I wanted to play with. I slightly prefer the controller to the PlayStation controller, uh, but I couldn't play with the kind of funny guys because they were all playing on PlayStation. I, the, the idea that you've got to which sub you've got to make this choice. We, we said that the, the console gaming these days is de is defined by compromises and choices. You can have this, but you can't have that. Do you want resolution or frame rate? Well, do you want to play with this subset of friends or that subset of friends? These these sucks. We shouldn't be making these choices in 2021 i'm so glad that cross play this is in inexorable as the tides cross play is going to be the norm in a few more years and we're seeing the barriers coming down i'm so glad that i'm going to get mlb baseball um i'm so glad that i won't have to decide do i want to play with snowbike mike or greg miller well food, that's an easy choice anyway let's be honest but i shouldn't have to i shouldn't have to make the choice I should be able to, we should all be able to play together. And the idea that there's some kind of reason why you can only play with one set of friends, we're seeing the wars of that argument crumbling down with each new game that comes out and supports cross play. I'm so glad that this is going to be cross play, cross progression. It's going to become the norm sooner rather than later. That for me is actually the thing I'm most excited about. The future of gaming is cross play, cross progression. MLB baseball is just one more brick in the wall coming down. Uh, I'm excited for, for all of those reasons. Yeah, this is a big deal to me because, of course, if you're an audio listener, I am holding up a PS Vita, <laughs> and I know yeah. it's a little foreign on the Xbox side, but this handheld was the coolest with MLB The Show because you could have it on the Vita version and your PlayStation version, and you could go back and forth, and your character would always be there. You would progress accordingly, and the idea that I'm finally getting the best baseball sim ever made on the Xbox side is a huge deal to me, and the idea of maybe putting it on the cloud and being able to play it on Android devices on the Xbox ecosystem is a big that. deal to yeah, me, right? Yeah. And when I look over at the baseball side of things on Xbox right now, the state of baseball, we don't have MLB 2K anymore. That has gone to the wayside. We are stuck with RBI baseball and we're stuck with Super Mega baseball, this cartoony sim that's not even baseball. It doesn't feel right, y'all. And this is a big deal if you're a sports fan, if you're not a sports fan, a huge deal to see and for Sony to bring this first party exclusive game that, like I said before, is one of the best sports games on the planet to bring it over the other side and feature cross platform play cross progression is gigantic. This is a massive deal. And hopefully this is the start of something new where we can really push cross platform play. And I know everybody's excited here, but there's one person on our show that is super excited. He is the baseball fanatic. He is the baseball guy of kind of funny. Our producer, Bear Courtney. So I wanted to make sure mm. I at least gave him a couple of moments <laughs> to share the hype and the enthusiasm because a lot of Xbox fans might not know about this game, Bear. Right. They might not understand Road to the Show with the Diamond Dynasty mm. or all the mm. fun you can have. So I thought maybe you could give a little light before we keep it moving. I mean, so it, it's funny. Like uh, when I got my Twitch recap of I, I saw only started streaming last year because we were working from home. <clears throat> uh, the game that I streamed the most was MLB The Show uh, 20 because I played through an entire season um, in like the the manager mode. And uh, yeah, I played I think I played almost all like the entire season on stream throughout the year and it was really fun and I, I love playing that game every year uh some titles more than others you know uh because because it's a yearly title not every iteration is is um pushing as much and sometimes it is just kind of like a carbon copy of uh the previous year and, and stuff like that but overall yeah it is it is a great series it's it's always delivering quality gameplay um my kind of recommendation for everybody, because this was uh, this was something that I had to talk to Dornbush about. Uh, Dornbush, the host of uh, Podcast Beyond, who wanted to get into MLB the show last year, uh, was saying like he's always wanted to get into it, but like the controls kind of always like throw him off. Like my recommendation for anybody picking this up for the very first time on Xbox and you haven't messed around uh, entirely with the M MLB the show because it, it's not something that you've really thought of before or you just haven't been able to uh, go into a quick play match and like play through a game and like every inning change the controls and like see what f feels right for you because there's 
so many different ways to play that game in just like mm-hmm. what camera angles you want, how you want to swing the bat, how you want to be uh, pitching. There's so much variance in how you can play that game. So I always recommend of like before you get into like whatever modes you want to get again, I'm always like the, I'm, I'm the basic dude who I just go into like manager mode and I just play through an entire season. And that's like, that's how I like to play sports games. That's how I play Madden. That's how I used to play NHL, uh, all of that stuff. I would just play through an entire season and just kind of be done with it. Um, so yeah, whether you're getting into to diamond dynasty, which, uh, I think is more of the, that's where like the cards start coming in and like yep. the kind of mm-hmm. microtransaction stuff. I never fuck around with that, but like, uh, road to the show, um there's also uh there's the I think um I think Road to October is another one which is like like the it, it's kind of like the manager uh or uh system where you can play through an entire season but you just play like the highlights and you can play through like the highlights of an entire season in like however fast you want and it's like super fun there's the uh, the mode that 2019 I think added, which was like playing important moments in baseball history. Like the the furthest one back is like playing Babe Ruth's first home run in his career, and then going all the way to uh, the um, the Cubs beating uh, Cleveland in the in the last game and uh, extra innings uh, back in what was that 2017, which broke my heart. Um, or maybe that was 2016. I forget. It was 2016. Uh, yeah, it was 2016. And yeah, that 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 one. I I always forget the year because I always try to block it out of my memory. Um, but there's just so, so many fun modes, and I'm I'm excited for everybody to to pick it up on Xbox. Uh, it, my last two things, I always found it amusing whenever I'd play MLB The Show uh, last year, and I'd get randos coming in. I'm like, man, aren't you so upset? Like, this is coming to Xbox next year? It's like, nah, dude. I'm excited for, like, more people to pick it up. Why are you trying to start this console war yeah. shit? It's so weird. And then the the last thing is, like, I'm interested to see whether or not, like, this is, like, more of, like, a, just more of the same from last year's game, or maybe they do add a little bit more this time around. Um, but if it, it does end up being more of the same, like I thought MLB The Show 20 was, um, if, like, X- if Xbox fans will be more high on the game than PlayStation fans, because they PlayStation fans have dealt with the series every year and, like, uh, picking it up every year and seeing what changes are made and stuff like that, like, if this ends up being, like, more of the same, like, It'll be interesting to see the uh, the difference between like how PlayStation fans receive it and how Xbox fans receive it. So I'm I'm interested to see how that all plays out in April. Hey Barrett, let me ask you this because this will be the first time I jump into this franchise because it's the first time on Xbox. I've been aware of it because it's been you know again on the other side of the Berlin Wall, right? You know on PlayStation, <laughs> I uh, never really never really engaged with it. Um, if I just want to swing a bat and steal bases and have fun, is it going to let me do that? It's not going to get me bogged down in too much simulator type stuff. Yeah, like the the mode that I play in, you can get like really simmy with it, and you can like you can go into like all of like the uh, paying bills and like all the like money earning stuff. But in that same mode, you can just jump into every game and just play the games and stuff like that. There's quick mode and all that stuff. Like it, it, it can be as simmy as you want, and it can be as just regular fun as you want. And that, again, that's why I always suggest like. The first thing you should do is go into a quick play game and like mess around with the controls and see like what feels right for you. Because again, this game has been great because of how much it can adjust to what you want your personal play style to be. Yeah, what I like about the FIFA games, for example, on on the EA side is, you know, you can play, there's various different control schemes. Like if you want to have like 20 different buttons for, you know, really, really finesse control for pro players, you can do that. Or you can you can dumb it all the way down to like, you know, pass and kick, literally like one button controls. And I usually play with slightly simplified controls. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can have like a kind of arcade type experience on it because that's generally yeah. how I like to play my sports games. Yeah. So exciting. And there's something that actually stole all the attention got even more exciting in the sports world and this one brought me way back college football is back y'all ncaa football college football is back baby (laughs) and you know i had to bring the energy you know i had to share the enthusiasm because the world was captured the gaming world had all the attention taken on tuesday morning because ea sports said with one tweet college football is back and everybody went wild it has been years since we've had NCAA football 2014, and I am so excited to see this come back. Of course, I'll preference this, and you know I don't like to curse on this show, but I'm going to give it to you plain and simple because people are going to get at me in the comments. Hey, them damn kids. Okay, that's plain and simple. That 
That's real world problems. We're going to talk about gaming problems here. And there is no gaming problems when it comes to NCAA football. Nothing's better than hitting the gridiron with your favorite collegiate team and having a good time. I'm really, really excited about this. <coughs> EA is going to work with the CLC on different trademark licenses. Of course, they're going to go. They said in the statement, they're going to keep an eye on the player stuff uh, day by day with NCAA and what the player likeness is, trademarks and all that will be. But as of right now, we do know that college football is coming back. And that's a pretty exciting world that I want to live in. Paris, you're holding back the smile. I know you're excited. What do you think about it? Do you know what the most romantic place in Gainesville is? The swamp, baby. Tell me no, all about no. it. No, no. Oh, come it's on. The, it's the sign that says, now leaving Gainesville. Go oh. Knowles. <laughs> oh, no. We're on two different sides here. That's not good. Because I'm a Gators fan. Uh, oh, no. Oh, I am a, I am a Noel day i die but uh but yeah i'm i'm so excited for this um i always loved that the ncaa games were not just a madden clone it was not just uh the madden with you know a college skin on it. it was literally two different teams working on it and it played differently than madden and yeah back back obviously during during its peak it was my preferred football game to play um compared to madden and yeah i would just get florida state and i would just wreck shop <laughs> that's it plain plain and simple i i loved it and i think what 2014 was the last one so 2014 um and this isn't technically ncaa i guess this is the college i forget the they're acronym it like college football or something like yeah, yeah once we get to that moment we'll know but we're going to refer to it as ncaa football yeah. until but then, okay folks the other thing about this, this is just really an early announcement. The game's f far off. I mean, we're still oh, yeah. not going to see it for a few years, unfortunately. But um, it is good to see that they are going to bring it back in some form. And I I'm with you, Pity Kids. I mean, because this one's not going to use the likenesses of, you know, the current college players and all that kind of stuff. But so what? Pay, pay these kids. G give them something. I they need some kind of stipend out, out of this whole thing. But um, I I'm excited for it. But um you know, it's unfortunate that it's still going to be a few years away. No doubt. Now, Gary, I heard you on Games Daily. This isn't your biggest cup of tea, but I wanted to spin it a little bit more for fun with you. So playing NCAA football brings me back to the old school days, right, where I'm having so much fun with my friends. We're playing NCAA football. We're playing Madden. We're playing NBA Live. Yeah, I said live, y'all. It used to be a game back in the day. Now... <laughs> It brings me back to the fun games that I really love. NBA Street, NFL Street, FIFA Street, Lynx 2004, Gary, for you on the original Xbox. XSN Freak. Sports. There you go. I love it. I'm talking freak style. Love NHL Lynx. hits, SSX Tricky, Backyard Sports. And so I, I got this moment where I started to really reminisce all the good days. So Gary and Paris, I wanted to ask you both, with the announcement of NCAA football, what is one sports game or multiple sports games that you wish could make a comeback or that you want right now in 2020 you just said and beyond. It. You literally just said it. And, and you know, apologies to everyone over at 2K. I want Lynx to come back. That was, that was my thing <laughs> back Woo! in the day. Oh, my God. We used to have so many nights where we just played Lynx and just did all kind of crazy stuff on the golf course. That would be the, the sports title I want to see come back. I love that, Paris. I like that you got that one. Gary, for you, I, I already know a couple, but, you know, Gary, I went down a big list there, and there's so many more. What are those sports titles you really want? No, I got a bunch. You wouldn't think that, you know, if someone like me, you know, a Brit who, again, I slept right through that college tweet. Yeah, pay the kids. I know you did. Pay, <laughs> pay, 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 absolutely pay the kids. A whole, a whole multi-million dollar industry built on the back of unpaid labor. That ain't right. You got to fix that shit. And it ain't just about paying them. Put them in the game. They deserve to be in the game just the way the NFL players do. They I should get to, have, get to see, have the thrill of seeing their likeness and their image and their name in the game and be on the cover of the game. Just the same as the NFL. They work just as hard as the NFL players. They put us just much skin in the game. They're risking brain injury just the same way the nfl players are put them in the game pay them end of rant beyond that um there's a bunch that i can think of you know what you know my number one if i could wave a magic wand it's Give gonna it to be him. bring back bring back nba street nba street volume 2 on the playstation 2 and on the original xbox one of my own time favorite games bring back dj cucumber slice you know i want yes. it back i want it all back Bring back DJ Atomica. You know I want SSX3. Bring back EA Big. Bring it all back. I loved all of those games. Um, I, I I guess now P, I guess 2K's now kind of got the PGA license pretty much nailed down, and I've they enjoyed mm -hmm. uh, PGA 2K21 a lot. I played a ton of it this uh, this past year. 
Um, but I, I like EA, like Tiger Woods, PGA, the 2007, 2008. That was the sweet spot for me. I used to love, love those games. I got a bit of a deep cut for you, though. My probably one of my most favorite games on the original Xbox, uh, Midway Games, NHL Hits. I don't know if you yes. ever played it. Oh, yeah. It's basically, played that one. It, so, you know, it, it, you know, NFL Blitz is the one everyone knows, but they had a hockey version of it called NHL Hits. It was three-on-three three hockey. It was way, just like, and imagine, so it's exactly what you think it is. Imagine NFL, but on ice, every single hit was a ridiculous Hanson Brothers body check right through the glass, shattering the glass in, into, the, or into the crowd. It was so ridiculous. It was so much fun. I loved it. I love these uh, NBA Jam style, over-the-top, crazy, you know, almost cartoon style um uh, uh sports games then you know I, I get that you know we like and we like madden we like fifa we like the, the the games that are accurate representations of the sports but there's also a lot of be f a lot of fun to be had with the jam blitz hits you know more cartoony style sports games i i, I wish there was there was more of a uh, uh more of a scene like that it used to, it used to be a big deal back in the early days of the xbox and the playstation for some reason it kind of went away but yeah nba street ssx NHL hits, NBA jam, bring back the bring back the fun, bring back just the silliness of it. I love it. Now, if we're really going to do a deep cut, I'm going to go with go deep, wild. deep 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 cut. Get wild. I'm going to take you all the way back to the NES. <laughs> bring back pro wrestling. Hayabusa with that kick and Starman flying off the top rope. Loved it. Absolutely loved it back then and I'm sure it's it probably looks horrible now, you know, but Man, as, as a kid, I absolutely loved that. It, it was amazing. And another NES sports game I would love to see would be the original hockey. It was, I think oh. I saw what it was called, it was NES hockey. And it was like, I think it was like three man. You had like the, the, the speedy, skinny guy. You had the big, fat tank dude with <laughs> yeah, the power. I remember that. Uh -huh. And then you had the average guy. Oh my God, I play that so much. So good. And then obviously well, everyone should say Tech Mobile. Who, who yeah. doesn't want Tech Mobile? Oh yeah, get, get Bo out there is right yeah. now. I'll piggyback off of you, and I, I went down the list of so many, and I think we all can agree we want them all back, right? But a couple that I, I have on my mind, Def Jam Vendetta and Def Jam Fight for New yeah. York. It is time to bring that back. Everybody loved those games. They were very, very special, and so I do hope that we can see that. And one that I want to bring up, I know it's not an Xbox one, but it's near and dear to my heart, is we live in a world right now where Mario Tennis and Mario Golf get all the spotlight and all the love, and they deserve that. But we've been in a cycle where we just continue to get those. We need to shine the light back on Mario Strikers. It's time to bring back Mario Soccer oh, yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. loves my language. that game. <laughs> you know, Gary, I, I try Mario my best. Super Mario Strikers, I want I, it. I want it. So, strangely enough, uh, uh, Sonic and Mario at the, at the Tokyo Olympic Games actually has a soccer, is one of the events. And it's mm -hmm. like, it gives you a little taste. It gives Whoa. you a little taste. It makes you want that Super Mario Strikers. That would be like the next Nintendo. I've been saying this for ages now. The next Nintendo Direct, like the thing that I would most want to see them drop would be a fully fledged uh, new um, Strikers, so a Mario Strikers game for the Switch. I would love that. It's a great one. And I'm so glad you guys got excited about that because with the announcement of NCAA football, it brought me back to the old school days and all those games that we had in that sports genre. And I, you know, it, it is interesting to think of the NFL Blitz NFL Street, the NBA Street, and where we are today and what those optics look like, right? I don't know if we can really have an NFL license and come out and start pile driving people or throw them through a trash can. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't work do that, that way, as my good friend Washburn always says to me as I cry and cry about how I want those games. He goes, it's about optics, Mike, and we're kind of past that here in 2020. But a fun one there. And the final big one to end out the show, we had one more awesome announcement, really a trailer and a release date for something that Paris is going to be able to give us a quick deep dive about. And of course, if you want more, you can check his new first impression out with Andy Cortez, the Nitro Rifle, here on Kind of Funny at youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, because Mass Effect Legendary Edition had a hot new trailer, and it had a nice special date right next to my birthday, May 7th, or May 14th, 2021. Paris, I mean, you got to see this behind closed doors. I don't want to, you know, ruin the first impression. You are our guy on the street right now. You get to tell us all about it. Why don't you share a little bit of hype or what you saw, what you thought of Mass Effect? Well, in a nutshell, they're taking the, the original trilogy, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, and they're updating textures, updating the, the lighting on it. It's going to be 4K. It's going to be HDR. If you play it on PC, it'll have controller support now. It will not have the multiplayer from Mass Effect 3 in it. It is still 
running on Unreal Engine 3, so it's not doing ray tracing or anything like that. Um, they've done some UI and quality of life improvements to just sort of the way some of the controls work for Mass Effect 1 to kind of bring it more in line with Mass Effect 2 and 3. Um, the character model, they are bringing Them Shep from Mass Effect 3 character model all the way down to Mass Effect 1, which is fantastic. That's crazy. They're also, yeah, they're also doing some diversity improvements with the character creator as well, you know, so people can make more people that look like them while they're playing for their shepherd um overall i it, it's great i mean i don't think what we what they've shown you know in the trailers does it justice because what they showed us in the briefing was side by side so you're literally seeing how it originally looked to like here's an improvement and when you see that you're like oh okay i get it Th this is definitely <laughs> an improvement and um again i, I highly suggest you go check out the first impressions um i did with andy but one nugget I, I will take out of that is uh, they showed an example of the elevator so that now the elevator can load as quickly as like 14 seconds and then you can skip all the rest of the dialogue, get out and you're in out in the Citadel. You can start talking to other NPCs and doing other things. And they were showing it was like over a minute and you're still sitting in that elevator pretty off doing other things. So again, it, it's just quality of life stuff. And the last thing I'll say about all of this Mass Effect 1, great. Mass Effect 3, great. But Mass Effect 2 is one of the best video games ever made. Ever. Ever. And whenever I think about hype, you know, I know people, me, I was super hyped about Cyberpunk. I was just as hyped back in 2010 for Mass Effect 2. And it 1000% lived up to the hype. It's one of the best video games you ever play. So if you've not, because like my kids, like my son, he's obviously never played Mass Effect. So this will be his first experience with this legendary edition, being able to play it. So I highly suggest anyone out there, hey, if you have the means, go pick it up when it comes out in May. I'm telling you, you're going to be in for a treat. Gary Witta, sci-fi, Mass Effect, storied franchise. You, you got the hype on this or what? Couldn't agree more. When we, I believe yeah, in I one it. of the very first um, X casts that we did, I think it was you, me, and Alana were talking about like our greatest, most favorite Xbox memories, and we all talked about Mass Effect Two. Paris is right; one of the all-time great video games. Absolutely, for me, that is the best game of that generation. Um, and everything that I've seen so far uh, really seems to seems to 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 say this is how you do a remaster the right way. Like they're, they're checking all the right boxes. For me, the visual fidelity upgrades is the least exciting part. It's more about like going back and. Uh, looking at some of the things that didn't work quite so well in Mass Effect 1, what yeah. they subsequently learned from and fixed in Mass Effect 2. You know, the vehicle control, the Mako wasn't like the most fun thing to do. Uh, again, some of the uh, bringing uh, all of the stuff that we, the, all of the stuff that they learned all the way through the trilogy and like retroactively reapplying it all the way back to the very first game. That's going to be amazing. Um, a lot of people in my timeline this week say, oh yeah, I never played Mass Effect. So I'm excited to jump into it. I'm so envious of those people getting to experience this game for the first time with, the, with all the remastered uh, upgrades and to be able to play all three games back to back to back as a trilogy. It's like, you know, being able to binge like the whole Star Wars trilogy or the Lord of, yeah. Lord of the Rings trilogy as a box set without, you know, years of waiting in between. What an amazing experience that's going to be. And all of the DLC, Paris, you remember this Lair of the Shadow Broker, one yeah. of the greatest DLCs awesome. I've ever played. It's just yeah, incredible. Absolutely. And it's absolutely. so, if it's 60 bucks, the amount of stuff that you're going to get. It, it, it's just absolutely incomparable. And I talked earlier about how, you know, Man Eater was one of the only games I went and collected every license plate. Mass Effect 2, I went, for, I read every goddamn codex entry, every single word of that game. The lore and the world building was so much fun. I And, and what you said about the elevator is, we talked, Greg and I talked about it this week. It's really funny. You know, they made a great way you know those load times in the elevators you know it was it was a thing they had to deal with because you know you had to wait a long time for the next section to load in so they stuck you in an elevator and and made the characters had a conversation you know an incidental conversation for you to listen to even though you you'll be able to quit out of those conversations much quicker now with the next gen load times you're not going to want to because the conversations and the storytelling and true. even the side stuff is great. You're not going to be pressing A to skip. You're going to want to listen to everything. The same way that in Spider-Man, I didn't want to fast travel because it was just more fun swinging through the city the old-fashioned way. Um, it's, it's, I, I really can't wait. I'm so excited to go back and revisit uh, those games. Even, even Mass Effect 3, which a lot of people didn't like, I really liked. Even, even with the ending and everything else, I thought it was a great ending uh, to the trilogy. I have so many fond memories of it. I usually don't go back and revisit uh, favorite games from from back in the day. I prefer to kind of leave my memory of them 
kind of crystallized in amber because i worry if i go back i'm like ah oh, this is not as good as i as right. i remember it being you know you kind of you, you tend to kind of look at the look at you know your gaming uh passed through and i've done this before like oh that game was such a great game it was so many like good memories of it but i remember i'm kind of looking at it through like rose tinted spectacles and nostalgia you go back and replay ah this is, wasn't, wasn't as good as i remember it's not aged well this is going to age just fine in fact yeah. if anything with the with the remaster and anything it's it, it's going to be better than it ever was i'm really really excited to replay the whole trilogy and all the dlc from beginning to end i guess the only if i had to find something to complain about it would be that it's not getting like a full next gen glow up like you know we'd love to see like ray tracing and everything else all the things that the series x and the playstation 5 can do but again comparing it to how it used to look it's it, it, it clearly looks so much better um I, I i couldn't be more excited i completely agree I, i'll say one last thing on yeah, tell it me. um go find jennifer hale jennifer hale she is the voice actress for fem shep she's one of the best voice actors period in, in gaming but she had she saw all the response and the trailer and everything and she has like this emotional response to the reaction to everything yeah she got kind of choked up right yeah yeah she did and and it's really cool to see because it's just i'm telling you go play as fem shep when you when you play this and you'll see why she's fantastic like i even had to tweet her and i just thanked her i like you were a part of my entertainment because that's how much i love mass effect when it came out um, to, to have her as that voice actor and to see that all these years later, she's emotionally invested into it too. It just says it all. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if you played Mass Effect Andromeda, mind wipe, pretend you didn't play it, go play the original trilogy <laughs> and you will, you will have a treat. It is fantastic. Paris, who's your favorite character? Well, Garrus. honestly, it's no, no, it's not. Everyone it's says Garrus. No, 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 it's, it's not. You know who I Jack. Okay. Jack, I, oh I, man, that's a polarizing one. A lot of yeah. people don't like Jack. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like Jack. I, I, I look because when you, oh, again, now we're, now we're diving into Mass Effect, but <laughs> the way you're introduced to her in Mass Effect 2 and then where you see she ends up in Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Um, I, All I the characters have great fitting. arcs. Yeah. Yeah, they have great arc. Absolutely. Yeah. It's she, a, it's she a tough be question because there's, it's, it's hard to choose. There's so many great yeah. characters. Yeah. God, you guys get me so excited about it. And May can't come any sooner. But if you need more Mass Effect in your life, youtube.com slash kind of funny games right now. First impressions with the Paris Lily and Andy Cortez. They're going to geek out about Mass Effect with you. They're going to get you excited. It is time to wrap up. So I'm about to smash do a lot of heads up that you all need to know about right now. Because trust me, you're going to want to know it. January's Inside Infinite, one of the first Inside Infinites that we're going to get. Their monthly goal is to come out each and every month at the end of the month and give you a nice deep dive, a whole lot of content here to read through on the blog post. And this one was really something special. That's why I want to highlight it because it's with the game Sandbox team. And it's something you might say to yourself, Mike, I don't know what that is. or I don't really care about that. But I'll tell you, this was an incredible read. I'm going to put it up on the must reads. We'll leave the link in the description, but I'll leave you with this one. This month, we're getting things started with the members of the Sandbox team. And next month, We'll talk with the folks working on bringing Zeta Halo to life, followed by a chat with the audio team in March. The game Sandbox refers to all the vehicles, equipment, weapons, and objects that the player will interact with. Essentially, all of the toys that the player gets to play with. The Sandbox team's crest really stuck out to me, and that's why I want to read it before we go on this one. We create weapons, vehicles, players' mechanics, and systems that innovate and reward player mastery. We respect Halo's legacy by partnering with our players with the same honesty and integrity we use to craft our gameplay. This blog post is massive, but it gets me amped up for what we're going to see with Halo Infinite. So go check out that blog post. I'd go more in depth, but we don't have enough time. Here's your weekly heads up. February games with gold, of course, stand as follows. Gears 5, Resident Evil, Dandara, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, Lost Planet 2, your free-to-play days for the weekend is going to be The Sims 4 and Poyo Poyo Tetris 2. Then on Game Pass updates, you got some new games hitting the Game Pass. Ghost of a Tale on PC, Project Winter on mobile with Game Pass, console, and PC. If you like Among Us, you're going to like Project Winter. Much more involved and a lot of fun to kill your friends and betray your friends. The Falconeer, Fantasy, Final Fantasy Seven, The Zodiac Age, or oh, that's Final Fantasy Twelve. my apologies. Jurassic World Evolution, great game coming your way. Stealth Inc. 2, a game of clones. 
and Wolfenstein Youngblood to grab a friend and go slay some Nazis. Then on February, leaving on February 15th, The Blob Ninja Gaiden 2 World of Horror on PC. Those are games that are leaving. Then continuing on, we have more games coming to the cloud with touch controls, which I think is just the coolest. You got to know about those touch controls. Donut County, Enter the Gungeon, Fractured Minds, Monster Sanctuary, River City Girls, The Dark Crystal, Age of a Resistance Tactics, The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, The Walking Dead, Michonne, The Walking Dead Season 2, The Walking Dead, The Complete First Season. That's a lot of Walking Deads coming your way with touch <laughs> controls. Uh, Tower Luna Knights, What Remains of Edith Finch, and Yes, Your Grace. Now rounding it out, Xbox Game Pass Perks. This is something that I really want to highlight to all of you. We touched on it before. These are things you get with the server, so let's make sure to take advantage of it, y'all. Claim your perks by going to the perks gallery on your Xbox Series X, S, or Xbox One consoles, Xbox app on Windows 10 PC, and the Xbox Game Pass mobile app on iOS and Android. This month's perks are Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Doc Bite Set, Dragon Ball Super Season 1, One Piece Season 101, Smite Season 8 Starter Pass, Fantasy Star Online 2 monthly bonus. Y'all, those are your perks. Make sure to take advantage of it. If you love anime like I do, One Piece, y'all, that is the coolest. Come on, take advantage of it. And that will conclude our kind of funny X-Cast for the week. I know I gave you that weekly wrap-up fast and quick, but man, we had so much fun. We aired our grievances. What grinded our gears? We talked Mass Effect. NCAA football is coming back. Paris and Gary got me amped up on thinking about all the fun sports games we used to have and what we could have one day. You never really know. But Paris, where can everybody find you? What are you doing? And let's get out of here, bro. You can find me over at GamertagRadio.com. You can find me on the YouTube channel, which is my name, Paris, P-A-R-R-I-S. And of course, you can find me on the Twitters at Vicious696. And I'm probably spoiling WandaVision and people are mad at me. So there you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Gary Widow, what are you doing this weekend? Where can people find you? What awesome stuff are you up to? probably play more uh, yakuza i might play some of it on stream because i really want to share that game with with the audience it's so much fun easy to find me twitch uh <laughs> twitter and youtube it's just my name uh g-a-r-y-w-h-i-t-t-a love that of course i am snowbike mike on behalf of myself bear courtney on the ones and twos of my two incredible co-hosts go have a great weekend play a bunch of games and challenge yourself to be better for all of us goodbye gamers see you later go bucks <laughs>